like a bunch of little history in these little flyers. So how long have you been doing H and Elm then? Have have you been in it since its inception? Yeah, I started it with a friend named Justin Snyder. He played in uh, King of the Tramps. Oh, I don't know if you remember those, that band. Yep, he played in that band for a while, and uh, Blake Moore and Gavin Galbraith. The four of us started it, and then you know, just we were all like really. It was like in two thousand and. Seven, two thousand no, two thousand six. Yeah, it was like yeah, it was a long time ago. And we, anyway, we started the band, you know, and as you grow up and life changes and you move and things happen. And then we, we ended up the three of us, me, Dave, and Gertis. Well, Eric. Yeah. Gertis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I figured that one out. I mean, that's the, the other thing. Like, I've known, I've known each of you guys for a while. I've played shows with you and things like that. So. I do kind of have a little bit of an in with you, but how did the band transform been from Facebook friends forever? What's that? Been Facebook friends forever. Yeah, it's official. It's Facebook official for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how did the band end up going from four piece to three piece? Was it out of necessity? Was it just easier to manage three people? Do you miss having four people? Oh yeah, I was. I don't know if I would say like. I don't know. It's different. It was definitely a transition because it really was kind of crazy. Like we started off, it was three guitar players and a drummer. <laughs> and then two of the guitar players sang. So we had no bass player. And then, uh, I don't know how it all happened, but Eric ended up coming in and playing bass. And then we were a four piece. And then Blake left. And then. Oh, I don't know. It's, there's a lot. There's a long line of how it became, I guess. It just kind of evolved that way. There wasn't really, like, anything that made it that way. Just all the way it happened, you know? Yeah, it just, it just evolved in the way. Because, like, it was really kind of cool because Eric and I were roommates at the time. <clears throat> and and Dave, I think he just had moved back. I don't know, man. Well, we'll all have to like sit down and talk about this because <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of this in here. But either way, it just turned out awesome that way. We just liked it that we just kind of kept it the power trio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys do very well doing a trio. Um, uh, the the guitar work is great. Uh, he does a good job of. You guys still doing the two amp thing? Yeah, he's got like a weird setup. I don't really know how he does that. That's yep. a guitar thing. Yeah, we had sat down and talked about it a couple times over the internet. And I was like, well, you could do this or this or this or this. And he found something that worked for him. And we spun some ideas off each other. And he's got something he said he really likes. So, uh, you know, hats off to him for having the complex setup and the determination to bring it to every show. Yeah, <laughs> those things aren't light. No. I mean, that's... It might be like the one benefit the drummer has. Like everything you have is big and awkward. At least it's not like mega heavy, but it's all just big and awkward. <laughs> yeah, nothing's heavy. But it's funny, like when you got like your bass drum in your front, and then you got like a tom or something bigger in your hands, and then you're just kind of trying to get through a door. You're just like a bouncing off the <laughs> door frames. That's something that never 